right, you guys, welcome back to the More Life Podcast. It's your host, Cassie. And it's your host, Kevin. And today we have a special guest here. I am super excited to do today's podcast. Um, You probably have seen her on Instagram. She has her own clothing line. And I'm super excited Mm -hmm. so we can all get to know her and just see what she is all about. So um, if you would like to take the floor, if you want to go ahead and tell us your name, where you're from, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, guys, what's up? It's the girl Mills. Um, so I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much for reaching out. And I'm very nervous <laughs> if I'm a little scary or whatever. It's because uh, I'm just excited to meet you guys. So um, a little bit about myself. Is that okay? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I'm from Houston, born and raised here. And um, <laughs> yeah, basically I became injured in 2014. So okay. I just made my eighth anniversary mark a couple of weeks ago on my birthday actually October the 4th oh, so wow. yeah yeah so it's very it's a very weird day because you know I'm trying to be grateful for another yeah. year but then you know you can't help but you know have those flashbacks of like my car accident how everything went down and so mm-hmm. it's a very weird day right so it's like yeah. ever since then, my birthday hasn't been my birthday right I, I don't think it's been like a happy birthday like yeah. happy birthday is yeah. um but that happened um, eight years ago, like I said. So ever since then, I've been doing like occupational therapy and physical therapy. Okay. And um, when I was doing, while I was doing that as well, I was well prior to my injury, right? Um, I was very active. Like I would play soccer, or when I wasn't at the gym, and when I wasn't at the gym, I was working. When I wasn't working, I was studying. I was actually studying to be a nurse. So I was taking my prereqs at Houston Community College. And I was ready to take my nursing exam because I would be done with my basics that winter. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um, but then, you know, I had to just... Um, you had your car accident. Stop taking the classes. Yeah, yeah. I had to stop taking the classes to recover, you know, focus on my recovery. Um, and I did. And I went back to school online on, in 2015. And then okay. after that, I went to the New- University of Houston. Oh, and then okay. I graduated um, from there in 2019 with a bachelor's in science and... Um, bachelor's I think kinesiology and minor oh, in nutrition. That's yeah, so, so cool. Little, really? Thank yeah, you. I also graduated with um a bachelor's degree in physical education and kinesiology, and oh, it's that's so awesome. yeah, and it's so cool because I was doing also. Sorry, I'm throwing this in there too. I also was doing nursing, and then my husband got injured, and then I was in the hospital, like learning about all this stuff that I was also reading in my textbooks, and I was just like, oh my gosh, like you know, it's it's. I give it up to all the nurses out there, and then I ended up switching my major also um, to physical education and kinesiology so um, that's pretty cool that's a cool subject I I loved it but um, that's awesome now I do want to ask when did how old were you when you got into your um, like when you got your spinal cord injury like what what year was that that I was 21 I had just turned 21 oh, okay it's crazy. like um, at the time well, prior to my injury, um, I met my boyfriend at the time in in ninth grade in ROTC class, actually. Okay. <laughs> so uh-huh. yeah, because I was planning to go to the military. Uh-huh. What branch? Uh, my sister was, uh, the army. My sister was in the in the army. Okay. So you know, I kind of wanted to follow her steps, and she was like, "Hey, like if you join ROTC, you're going with a higher rank." Mm-hmm. So I was like, yep. "You know what? Um, I think I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna do it a little a little different, you know, because she joined right when." Like a week later, when she graduated high school, I was like, like, bro, like, you're crazy. What are you doing? Yeah. So um, through the years, I learned that if you go into the military with a with a degree, you go in with a higher rank. So I was like, okay, perfect. You as an officer. Yeah. So I was like, I'll finish being a nurse. And then I do want to be a nurse and a sociologist. So then the Army will pay for my school then. And that was my plan. And I had it all set up. And, you know, like, you make plans and then God laughed at at them. Mm -hmm. So that didn't go as planned, right? And, um... Anyways, going back to high school, that's mm-hmm. where I met my ex-boyfriend. I had been dating him for like six years. Mm-hmm. And um, every time we would go out, like I would always, you know, drive because I knew how he was. Mm-hmm. So um, it's crazy because the one time that I didn't drive, I ended up as a quadriplegic, right? Wow. And I was very like, 
just like you know about don't drink and drive and stuff like that so the fact that it happens to me i'm kind of like really you know but so um i was on my way home from celebrating my 21st birthday mm-hmm. and sometimes like i leave i was telling tab yesterday that like i leave off the alcohol part of the story mm-hmm. because i feel like um people use that as an excuse to be like oh it's because he was drunk that's why he crashed like no yeah. he was a shitty person and he caused the accident right because oh, he crashed okay. on purpose and that's how it all happened but oh. like you, you know what I mean? people you know when you go to grocery stores like oh my god what happened to you and yeah. you know they ask you stuff like that yeah sometimes i do tell my story but sometimes i don't yeah um and sometimes like i said like i leave off that part and don't judge me but like oh my god why did you train i mean why did you get in the vehicle if you saw him drunk but what people don't understand or like what i don't really tell yeah. people is that before getting into the vehicle that day of my birthday i you know we had an agreement and we even pinky promised and i was like um make sure you drive like please promise me that you're not gonna like drink because mm-hmm. you're gonna be drinking. and it's my birthday like i want to drink you know i wanted to be like my my day you wanted to celebrate guess, oh, okay yeah. okay so y'all planning on going out for your birthday yeah yeah we went out for my birthday yeah and you know um usually like i was just like drink a beer or whatever and i never mm-hmm. drank like alcohol so i knew like it, it, i knew i was gonna get drunk right yeah um so we made an agreement and i remember i was out there outside my house like five minutes i was like make sure you're not gonna drink like please promise me and like i was very um still to this day like if you pinky promise me it's because you pinky promise me you know that's right. like a, yeah. an agreement so um i guess i just trusted him so mm-hmm. By the time that the night ended, I just remember me being in the vehicle with my seatbelt on. I I woke up and I looked at him and he was like drunk. Like he was just like about to go to sleep. He was driving like this on the steering wheel. So I remember like, I remember clearly like looking at him and being like, hey, like what, like what's going on? Like, why did you drink so much? So I got, I got really mad. I got really upset. So I took on my seatbelt and I was like, you need to pull over. Like I'm going to drive. Like that's not okay. We started arguing and then he. As you guys are driving. What was that? As you guys are driving? Yeah, as, as we were driving. And then after that, he was saying some stuff. And then I don't really remember the rest. But then I remember him going through the medium and then going through the street and then crashing into the pole. Um, so oh, wow. It, it, yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, that's crazy. How I, that's how the story went on. So uh, now would. Were you like scared? I don't know. Were you scared or like more angry at the time, like of the accident, or you were just I, kind of in a blur, I, like re- when you woke up? Because you said you were asleep, so you woke up. Were you kind of a little bit more? I would say like sober. Um, no, I was definitely um drunk. Like I had drunk and I yeah. I wasn't used to like drinking alcohol. Yeah. I remember me being. And I was very upset. I was like, I asked you for one thing and one thing only. Like, mm-hmm. why, why, why did you drink that much? You know. Mm-hmm. Um. So after that, like, I just felt scared. Like, as soon as I like felt the car shaking and seeing the trees everywhere, I was like, oh no, like this mm-hmm. is it. And I felt like that was the first time that I ever gave up. So I was like, I, I, there's nothing I can do. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so- my- oh, sorry about that. So, <laughs> so whenever you woke back up and you was trying to, you know, like tell him to pull over, you were trying to tell him to pull over. How was he acting when he started like driving like uh like faster? Like was he acting like more like irate? Was he saying anything? Like like what was going on like inside the car? Like are y'all arguing or like what's going on? Like what's going on right there? We were arguing and I remember me hitting him. I remember oh, me hitting him over okay. like like why not like snap out of it like yeah. pull over. Um and mm-hmm. what what's crazy is that when he crashed into the the pole. It was on his side, mm. and if I would have put my seatbelt on, I think I would have been fine. And 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 the crazy thing is that like um because I was talking to him like this, and I was telling him like, hey, like yeah. snap out of it, like over. I ended up like protecting him because the crash was on his side. So then I think I fell onto him or something, mm-hmm. and I protected him because nothing happened to him. And on my uh, side, there, yeah. And it seems like it seems like that that's like a running theme. Like the person that caused the accident, nothing happens to them. But yeah. it seems like the passengers that are in the car get like I would say like the most like uh they take like the biggest impact. Mm-hmm. And then you said that you wasn't wearing your seatbelt at the time because you had just took it off. So mm-hmm. so was so 
if it happened on his side, like, are you like thrown like just towards his side or like, like where do you actually end up? Like, where does your body actually end up? Like, are y'all still in the car or do you get ejected from the car or like what happens right there? So I stayed in the car, but um, through the years, like he's always tried to reach out to me, like um, mm-hmm. making like an Instagram, making me Facebook, calling me. And yeah. through, through all the years, like I've always just blocked him. Like I was like, I don't have nothing to talk to you. Like I yeah. talked to him afterwards just to break up with him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but um, after that, it was just, it was a lot of hate. It was a lot of, yeah. your pe- can I say that word? No bad words. Oh, no, that's no right. That's right. Yeah, you can. I was like, you're a piece of shit, man. Like, I can't believe you did this. Like, you out of everyone you knew that, like, I love to run. You took that, you took that away from me. Like, yeah. like, why you, you know? <laughs> because we've been the boys a, a while. Um, so, what, what was I going with this? Um, oh, oh, how, how it happened, right? Yeah. Um, so, we were in the car. And last year, actually, I decided to let me reply. <laughs> actually talk to him like yeah he's a piece of shit but i feel like i should know what happened right yeah mm-hmm. am i cutting off or no? uh, am you, i cutting off you was for like a second but it actually came back to like uh, yeah uh, like you said you fast. were reaching out to him to yeah so, much get answers yeah yeah so uh, one of those times like he reached out to me i was like let me reply back and ask him like hey um like what happened it just yeah a lot of people say like don't talk to him or whatever but at the end mm. of the day like he was the only one there, so yeah. he knows what happened. He knows the story, and I feel like I should know what did I do, right? Because I don't remember. Yeah. Um, so he told me that I opened my door and I walked on his side, and um, I asked him like if he was okay. And after that, I just fell, and then I like, collapsed. And he thought that I was playing because I would always joke around, you know. Yeah. Not. I was, I was goofy and um he was like oh Mildred like wake up like stand up like what, what? and he said after that I was never able to like Get stand up, up. Mm-hmm. yeah stood up. so that's crazy I didn't even know I don't I haven't even told my parents or yeah. anyone wow. about that wow. so apparently I went and asked him how he was doing mm-hmm. and then just fell mm-hmm. yeah do you remember, like, after the car accident? Like, did you just kind of black out after the car accident and just kind of wake up in the hospital? Or were you going in and out? Like, did you ever, you know, kind of see if the ambulance came and got you? I um have, like, in and out flashlight. Mm. So I remember um, seeing the CVS sign, like, like little flashes. Mm-hmm. And I remember it was maybe, like, a three people it was a motorcycle it was three three young folks in the motorcycle but i don't remember their face so i wish i could know who they are to think think them but it was a guy and i remember him putting my head in his lap somehow Mm -hmm. but my my body was on the floor Mm -hmm. and there was don't worry it's gonna be okay and (laughs) i had just bought me an lv purse the day before because it was my birthday and i remember I was like, oh my god, make me get my purse. I peeped in my purse and there oh. <laughs> and yeah. um I was like, Oh, in my in my bag, like I have my phone, please call my dad. Mm-hmm. And like I know my dad's phone by memory, so I was just repeating it, like please call eight three two and I kept on saying it, I kept on saying it. Mm-hmm. And um and then afterwards, like I'm over here like dying and um like make sure you call this other person too and then make sure you call my other sister. Aww. So I, I told the person to call my dad, my sister, Uva and my sister Katie. So I was like, make sure you call them, mm-hmm. let them know. Cause like I don't know, I guess I thought I was gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> and then after that I just remember me being in the hospital and then having like a nurse and she was like a bitch. I was mm-hmm. telling her like, Hey, I can have some water. She's like, No, you can't drink anything. And I was like, okay, well, fine. Well, can I go to the restroom? I really have to go pee. And she was like, well, go. I was like, well, I'm sending you because I can't go. I was like, what do you mean? I was like, well, I can't stand up. I feel ants everywhere. So my my face feels antsy. My whole body feels like I have ants. I was like, I need help getting up. She's like, what do you mean? So next thing you know, I feel like everyone like coming to me and then like telling me, can you feel this? Can you feel that? I was like, well, no, not really. And then after that, I just remember uh, my head hurting a lot. And then me, mm-hmm. somebody said I was going to go into like an MRI. Um, tunnel yeah mm-hmm. and then I was just like okay but but um I have to throw up and I ended up throwing up like he doesn't like I can smell the alcohol 
because I had drunk a margarita and um, it was just disgusting because I couldn't sit up. So yeah. it was just like all right here, and I was like in this tunnel with like throw up. Uh, <laughs> it was the worst. Yeah. Mm. And like I'm not a fan of margaritas anymore <laughs> or ever ever since then. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's all I remember. Yeah, mm-hmm. and what that's that's crazy that you said that because that's that's something that I never really share with anybody was when I was in the hospital and uh, this was pretty much like a couple of days after I woke up out of coma because I was in a coma for like three weeks. And like by the time I woke up, I had lost like a hundred pounds and I like, and I really, I couldn't really move like that much. So when, so like I would get real nauseous and I would throw up and I couldn't move really. So like literally like you would throw up and it'd be like all like right here. Like how you said, like all right here, but it's, but it, it but it was really cause I couldn't move. So literally I'm just throwing up on myself. So I, I can totally relate to, to like, you know, you doing that. And it was like, it was like the shittiest feeling in the world because like, I just felt like I just really couldn't do anything. I felt claustrophobic. I couldn't move. I, I feel some type of way right now. Like, mm-hmm. like, like, so trust me, I, I definitely understand. It was, that's crazy that you said that because yeah. it was, it was just like a horrible feeling like at the time. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you weren't, when you got to the hospital, you kind of didn't know that you were paralyzed. You were just, you know, you no. just got into a car accident mm-hmm. and you don't know what's going on. You can't get up and you know, things like that. So when do you find out, like, finally, like, the doctor might, or did anybody come to you and finally say, like, look, okay, you might not be able to walk, or what, you know, what happened? So it wasn't until later, like, I'm saying, like, the paramedics didn't even know that I had a neck injury. They just thought Ooh. I was, like, like a young girl mm-hmm. drunk. Mm-hmm. I didn't have no scratches at all. Like, I looked wow. completely my dress was looking so cute. Like when I had shoes all over my face, like days later, my face was still beat. Like my face looked very glowy. So oh my yeah, I was wearing the foundation that day. And the nurses, like I said, she was being like, but she thought I was um like just being like a sassy drunk girl. But yeah, I really really couldn't get up. And it wasn't until then that they were they started to panic. So it took like two hours for them to notice that I was paralyzed. So then they flew. They so they didn't fly me. They I went in the ambulance to the medical center in Houston Mm -hmm. and my parents didn't they thought that when when they heard that I had broke my neck Mm -hmm. they thought that I had just broken a bone like that was it you know it was gonna get killed I was gonna be fine Mm -hmm. so when it it wasn't until like after surgery where they were like hey like she broke her neck but we're not doing this to fix her we're doing this to stabilize her so that's when my family was freaking out but they didn't tell me until maybe like when I was in rehab when I realized that, like, I was, it was a forever thing, a paralyzed thing. And yeah. I think it was maybe, like, a month later mm-hmm. when I was in rehab and I had asked the, the doctor, I was like, okay, so how long am I going to have this, this bag here? And she was like, what? And I was like, oh, like, this pee bag. Like, when am I going to be able to take it off? She's like, oh, you're going to have that forever. Oh I'm like, what, what do you mean forever? She was like, yeah, that's a permanent thing. And I was like, and that's when everybody was like, wait, what, what is it? Like. I think that's when it, it kind of got me like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. this is yeah, like I can't walk or mm-hmm. like be in the. It actually, they didn't even tell my parents. They, they didn't, didn't even tell have people. I mean, they tell me, yeah, you can walk, but like, I feel like it was so bad that they didn't even say like, oh, you have zero chance of ever walking. It was more like a, she's never going to be independent again. Mm. They, that's how they said it. So yeah. that's that's how bad it was. Like, no, you the walking is not even there. Like, mm-hmm. you know you take care of her you have to like move around every like so many hours in bed mm-hmm. that's what they said mm. yeah. you know what they probably told you they probably told your parents that because most people with your level of injury that's probably how it does happen for them like they yeah. probably don't get the use of their hands back or like anything like below the neck so a lot of them probably are you know, very dependent, f- f- you know, for the rest of their lives, you know, but in your case, it was probably a little different because uh, you said that when you woke up that you really couldn't feel anything from the neck down. Um, Like um, after my surgery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, like, yeah, like when surgery, you woke up, I- what could you feel and what couldn't you feel? Um, Everything hurt. Like my everything whole body. Hurt? Yeah. Everything hurt like a lot. And okay. well, I just couldn't move at all. Like the only thing that I can move was like shrugging my shoulders. Oh. I couldn't like 
do this or anything. So my parents had to feed me and like, mm, like I'll tell okay. you yesterday, like I had to wake up my parents like at three in the morning mm-hmm. so that to scratch my nose. Oh my so it was, yeah, it was very um, bad like that. And they mm-hmm. told my parents that it was like a complete quadruple to five to yeah. six. Um, mm-hmm. And just like over the years, I was able to regain strength and mobility. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks to, to God, honestly, and my family, and like the mentality that my parents raised me mm-hmm. to like, like keep pushing regardless of like right. what happens. Mm-hmm. And I feel like because I was raised with that like, like tough love thing that you know like like life I keep going gonna yeah. bring like yeah. like fucked up shit. But I mean at the end of the day, you know, I mean you have to keep going. Yeah. So I think that really helped me a lot. Just yeah. Like my parents, my family. Okay. Oh, my big. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's beautiful to hear, you know, you have a strong family behind you and they support you and they're there for you. And it's beautiful yeah. to see you here because you look beautiful. And, you. Um, you know, that's great, too, because uh, y- like Kevin was saying, you know, a lot of people who get neck injuries, they don't get, all, you know, any type of movement back. So, yeah, for me looking at you, I mean, honestly, I didn't know it was your because I guess you're considered a quadriplegic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, hormones are affected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, you look like you're you're look like you're living life, you know. So <laughs> it's good to see you here. Um, how long did it take for you to get your sensation back, like in your hands and stuff like that? Like, yeah. like how long did it take for you to actually like start moving them again? Um, I I started to uh, move them like maybe at the end of like. Um, rehab, so maybe like okay. three, months, three months where I started to like slowly move. So mm-hmm. I couldn't push my chair at all, like not even in the house. Mm-hmm. We have tile, and you know how sometimes it's like it has a little curve. Yeah. Like I was so weak that I couldn't even push through the tiles in my house. Like it was mm-hmm. very, very bad. Yeah. Um, so it just it started like like slowly like that. Um, transfer. I okay. um graduated from like the power wheelchair to a manual where somebody pushes me, and then to just uh someone kind of like the one that i have now mm-hmm. okay that's okay cool. it's a couple of tears yeah oh trust me <laughs> trust me they do uh they do start adding up they do start adding <laughs> up because i think i think right now i think right now in the house how many i got oh, like gosh. four I like you got four one like or in five. every room i do i do <laughs> i well well you know sometimes one you know like the brakes go out on one and then i ain't got the brakes to fix so I, let me go let me go grab my backup one so i, I think you have one. like four I in do. total but it, one is considered kind of like a standing frame so yeah okay. um now after your accident so i know you were going to school it was you know obviously you just uh celebrated a birth well it was your birthday you got into your accident now after how long did it get Time, like how long was it before you kind of got home and like kind of like settled in and realized okay I can't finish school right now or you know like what what was life when you got back home um, I was actually um in, in the ICU when I when I told my family like hey like I, I need a um withdraw from these classes because mm-hmm. I thought if I was going to go back to school like in in a few weeks mm-hmm. at the time and do. like i remember um i had this guy i would do homework with right mm-hmm. and i was like oh make sure look at my phone and send this guy a message and tell him to come and pick up my homework that i did yeah. over the weekend me mm-hmm. thinking that i'm gonna go back right and they're looking at me like let me just do what this crazy lady is telling me to do right so the guy comes and he picks up the homework mm-hmm. um and it wasn't i want to say like maybe like a month later where you know everything kind of started yeah. to make sense okay i'm gonna be in the hospital for a long time i need to drop these classes mm-hmm. but yeah at the time i thought i was gonna go back like i was gonna go back with crutches or something mm-hmm. um but yeah I, I would say like a month where i decided to focus on my recovery yeah. or you know yeah yeah okay now um how long how long were you in the hospital for um so in the icu maybe like two two weeks okay and then uh, after that, I went to inpatient at Pierre Memorial Herman. Okay. And that's the place to be at if you're, like, somewhere in Texas. They're awesome. So they um, set you up, like, having therapy from, like, 9 all the way to, like, 3. So you do occupation, you do physical, and then you do, like, some recreational. So you're always doing something. So it's really hard to, like, uh, it's really hard to be depressed because everyone there is, like, they're great, right? Yeah. Um, 
university. So you do, I did that. And then I went home for like the holidays. And then I went back to um, inpatient for another like four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do you feel like was the hardest thing that you had to learn while doing that whole rehab process? Um, In the beginning, it wasn't that hard. It wasn't? Because I was busy and because like, my family was there and because friends mm. were there and because like uh, people kept on showing up, but you know, in the beginning, everyone's there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Everyone's coming, bringing flowers and just bringing food. Mm-hmm. Mm. There was like later that it's more like, okay, I'm doing outpatient therapy now. Mm. People are living their lives and like, I'm not walking yet. Mm-hmm. You know, you feel like you're going to like get better and get better and get better. It was mm-hmm. the pages like you do and some, Time you don't, you know. So yeah. I always thought that, like, okay, by this year, I'll be walking with crutches and I'll be good, and I won't mm. need the journey. And I, I'm in a, I'm in a complete um, injury now, so like I was walking with crutches, but I always thought like I'm not gonna walk with them anymore. Or it's gonna get to a point where like I'm not gonna see a tire, I won't need my chair. Mm-hmm. But then it was kind of I felt weird because it was like, okay, so I can walk with crutches, but not far. But if I go somewhere with my crutch, I have to make sure that there's nothing on the floor, like um, like no spills or it's not wet, because it's like, if it is, then I'll slip, right? So it's like, mm. the crutches have like grip, and mm-hmm. you have to make sure everywhere that there's nothing there that you will like slip or anything. So it was, uh, when it got to that point of like, who am I? Am I like somebody that uses a wheelchair? Am I not like, but yeah. like, I can't really walk and it's not functional. Mm-hmm. And people were always like, oh, you're gonna like walk better you know it's gonna get better but it got to a point where i was like i'm not getting stronger and since only some of my muscles work my knees starting to hurt because you know it's just i'm yeah. compensating the muscles that are there yeah. and then when i would go to stores it would take like a long time so i was like i'm not enjoying life and i'm not trying to be ungrateful but i'm grateful but if my hands don't work so i can't go up ramps because i'm i focus so much and like walking that like my upper body isn't strong and it's just so weird, you know, with yeah. my injury. So I was like, I'm trying to go back to school, but there's no way I can tear my backpack and then make it in time from park all the way over here to get to the restroom. I'm going to have an accident. It's, it's just not going to work out. What if it rains? Okay. And I can't open the door if I have my crutches because it's not mm-hmm. all functional yeah. walking. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, I was like, you know what? I need to start using my chair. So I started practicing using my chair more often. Like, going up ramps still to this day I kind of suck at ramps so mm-hmm. I use my smart drive um but <laughs> yeah. so it's just weird like I'm just weird and then like um I couldn't walk I didn't consider myself a walker because I don't walk like them and then I couldn't consider myself somewhere in the wheelchair I was like I'm fake like what am I yeah so it was very like that at the beginning where I started to feel like what do wow. I do who am I yeah mm-hmm. that's yeah. so crazy to hear I think that's the first time I've had somebody really explain like you know feeling kind of Like, in between, you know, like, you're Mm -hmm. not really fully, but you do feel sometimes, or, you know, whatever, how you may feel, but that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, and and it's so many factors, you're right, it's, like, so many factors, like, yeah, you can, you know, move from here to here, but... Okay, if it's raining, it's a different story, you know, or mm-hmm. or if you now you got to carry all your groceries. Now I can't carry all my groceries. So like yeah. who's going to carry them to the car, you know, or mm-hmm. so it's like it it's honestly it's finding the best way to live your life, yeah. you know, and it's like it's just trial and error and and that's what you're doing. So um mm-hmm. it looks like I mean, it looks like you're finding your way. Um, Mm -hmm. with finding out what way works best for you so now you do use a manual wheelchair on the daily yeah i use a manual wheelchair and this was maybe like three years ago where i felt the strongest um i ever because you know it was was during covid so i was i think i was overdoing it i was working out too much and um i had a fall i had a fall and that definitely backed me up i broke i tore my pcl and meniscus so yeah, it was. I had surgery last year. So that was mm. 2021. But I had my. I tore tore it in 2019. So it took me a whole year to get a doctor to do the surgery on me because quotation marks I wasn't normal. Yeah. So I had a doctor like, oh okay, um, yeah, you don't need that surgery. I'm like, I need it. What do you mean I don't need it? Like, oh no, you you don't walk, you don't need it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yes, I need it, my guy. So mm-hmm. I. I went maybe like for like 
I think I saw like four doctors and they gave me like a no. So oh I felt gosh. very like defeated and I was like, why, why would you not fix me? Like at the end of the day, I'm a human, like fix my tendons, you know? Yeah. Um, and finally I met Dr. Shu here in Houston. He was like, oh no, like that's terrible. Like why are you with this broken knee for like a whole year? So he did, he agreed to do the surgery. We did the surgery. Um, and I'm slowly trying to get back to like walking with crutches. I'm mm-hmm. not there yet. I'm just yeah. trying to stand now because I lost a lot of like my strength throughout mm-hmm. the two years. Yeah. So no. I'm not walking. I, I was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you don't mind me asking, like, how did you fall? Like, were you working out like at the gym or at home? What were you doing when you broke it or I, tore it? Uh huh. Yeah. I was in the kitchen grabbing the orange. Oh. <laughs> the orange juice. So it was like dramatic and in the movies, like yeah. I fall and the orange juice goes all like oh. spills all over me. I'm drenched and I'm just there. Oh and the God. thing is that like I can stand if I'm holding on to something, right? Just kind of like balance. Mm-hmm. But if I fall, like that's it. Like there's no way that I can get up. So yeah. I'm not that strong. Yeah. So like my strength you... is really confusing to people. They're like, well, why are you standing? Yeah. I'm like, well, I just take it off the floor. Like it should, you know, yeah. it's not safe for me to be out there walking. Yeah. So then I had to call my sisters, and then they picked me up, and they're like, oh, my God. And I was like, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. And the thing with the feelings is that, that I don't feel the pain until, like, a day later. Oh. The, the whole day, I just, I went actually went out because it was my birthday. Oh. I mean, like, spooky things happen. And really? Happened on my birthday. That yeah, was I went out birthday? That yeah, oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I went out, and, you know, with my sisters, we have fun. Mm-hmm. And the next day, I'm like, why does my knee hurt so much? Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I'll go away. And then I started to panic, and I was just like, well, if it doesn't go away in a week, then I should panic. Yeah. And it just got worse and worse and worse. And I, I was like, you know what? I need to go to the doctors. I went to the doctor, and they told me I tore my PCL in my penis. Mm-hmm. Ooh, and yeah. what's crazy is I seen the video of how your your knee yeah. was moving. That, that yeah. <laughs> I, ooh. It was broken for sure. Ooh, I haven't yeah, seen oh. it, but I'll definitely go check it out. Yeah, it was, yeah. It, it, to, to be honest, the knee looked like a dummy knee. You know, like one like uh, like your kneecap, like, a, like your kneecap was moving. Kind yeah, of thing. Uh, it was like moving <laughs> in. It was moving in. Yeah, it, it was, was like. like you, oh my gosh! Uh, uh, like one of the ones like uh, like you would see like yeah. on a dummy or or, uh-huh. or or like a mannequin. Yeah, like yeah, it was it was moving. I'm I, surprised, I was, but then the, then again, I'm surprised. Like, why would you know you would have to go through four doctors to finally find one that like okay, I'll fix it. You know, like I'll do the surgery for you. Like that's crazy too. You know. You know what? And it's because the doctors don't. And they don't want to work with people yeah. with spinal cord injuries. Yeah, they don't. they don't. Yeah, we've we've come across too, you know, like doctors like, oh no, like, you know, they say they're specialized in this, but then when it comes down to actually doing something, they're like, oh no, here, you, we'll refer you to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and it kind of sucks too, yeah, you know. And then a doctor actually told us too, he said, you know, like you're going to come across, doc- you're going to cross, you're going to come across doctors like this, but it's just, they don't want to do it. Yeah, that's exactly what he told us. He said they just don't want to do it. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's like in their discretion. You know, if a doctor really yeah. wants to do that, then he will. But if he does, if he has a mm-hmm. right to refuse. I guess any yeah. kind of work. But that's that's crazy, and that's crazy that it happened on your birthday. Like, when's your birthday again? Yeah, October the fourth. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. and um, cause I, well, obviously, uh, your uh, your spinal cord injury happened on your birthday. How is it leading up to that day? Because I know you said that that day is kind of eerie. And I feel like for everybody, Mm -hmm. for everybody, we are grateful to be able to, I would say, live another day to actually experience that day. But that day is kind of somber. But leading, I feel like leading up to it is the worst. And then the day gets there and it's just uh, whatever. But leading up to it is like the worst. It's just, and it's like your body kind of knows it. It's like weird things start happening. You start having accidents pain i don't know it just it, it's just weird so how is it leading up to that day for you um you know what all all those years like i guess seven years um mm-hmm. it, they were very um depressing yeah honestly like i would i would just be kind of like um why me yeah. or um, i would try to fake it and be like you know what this can be a good year like mm-hmm. you know after everything like i'm still here like i have my family um, but I just couldn't help it. Like, I just felt so sad. So I would just, um, end up feeling very overwhelmed, like trying to fake that I'm happy that everything's okay. So I remember telling my sisters, like, oh, um, my sister Katie actually asked me, like, oh, um, what do you do for your birthday this year? And I was like, nothing. I just, you know, like, 
Maybe yeah. I'll be sad, so I don't want to do anything. You know, well, I just don't want to feel overwhelmed by thinking that everything's okay. And it's yeah. kind of sometimes not okay, you know? Right. Like, mm-hmm. um, but um, so recently, um, my, my sister passed. So um, it was my birthday, like I said, like a month ago. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that pain was just bigger than my injury. So it was just like, oh, I didn't really realize that, oh, like it, it wasn't. It wasn't sad that I was disabled anymore, you know? Uh, um, so, and I feel like from now on, it'll kind of be like that. Like, oh, yeah, I, was, I could walk one day and now I can't. And then I got an accident. Like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I think that's how it's going to be from now on because that pain from my sister is like way bigger than become disabled for me. We're, we're like a very united family. So, like, mm-hmm. um, like losing her is bigger than losing my ability. Mm hmm. So, but then I, I understand that not everyone has that united family, right? right? So I, I don't think that it's going to be like that for everyone, you know? Mm, like their bond is really close, you know? I'm so sorry to hear that about your sister. Uh, but yeah, it's like, it kind of just kind of mentally like makes you realize too, you know, like I'm still here, you know? So I shouldn't, I you know, of course, you, of course you could be sad, but... It's at the end of the day, you know, it's like it uh, it's it's like a blessing in disguise in a way. I don't know. Like it's 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 hard, you know, um, but I I just like I feel like the way you're saying how close your family is and the bond and how strong you guys are and you guys stick together and have each other's backs like that's beautiful, you know, and I I hope, you know, anybody out there who does feel alone or if they do come across you know, birthdays where they feel like, you know, sad and depressed, like don't be, you know, you're still here. Like it's still something to be, we all have to be grateful for something too, you know? Um, so we should be happy that we're still here living life and we're able to wake up every day and, and be able to just do what we can, you know? Yeah, for sure. I, um, now that like I have that perspective, right. I feel like, um, I shouldn't have been sad, you know, and enjoy those moments with my family. Yeah. So at the end of the day, that's all you have. Like, you know, like, like I said, I know not everyone's close to their family, but like for some people, like that's all they have, like like myself. So at the end of the day, when things get tough, like it's just your family and you don't take nothing with you. Like it's just like experiences. And I really wish I would have just enjoyed the moments a little bit more because now I'm going to have birthdays and she's not going to be there, you know? Yeah. So, um, I, I wish I would have like um started therapy to like um have like a better like healing mm-hmm. or just like stand my injury more and like let it go because at the end yeah. of the day we're disabled it ain't going it's not gonna go anywhere it is what it is yeah. so then why be sad about it like exactly it is what it is makes the best out of it you know mm-hmm. yeah. and I I wish that would I would have so I could have like enjoyed like like little yeah. moments like that more because at the end of the day that's all you have and pictures and videos yeah. right. And people always get mad at me because I'm always, oh, you're always taking pictures. You're always on your phone taking videos and pictures. And I'm like, <laughs> look, I know we're doing something like nothing out the regular. You know, you're laying on the floor, maybe getting a massage or something like just random stuff, yeah. you know, like stupid stuff that we I might record. Like, why are you but always record? Why are you always mm-hmm. recording? I'm like, uh, like, hello. Like, I, I can, yeah. you know, because I know one day. I'm going to be looking back and, you know, just saying like, look, you know, this is what we used to do or look what we, you know, just yeah. little things like that. And mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. We got to let go of like, I don't know. I got, I just guess let go of that idea you had of what your life would kind of be like, let yeah. go and kind of just move forward and just realize, mm-hmm. you know, we have to realize also like well, there's more life, you know? Um, I remember we used to have that song. You got to let it go on our videos. That oh, music, oh yeah. yeah. We used uh, to have this song, and you got to let we it go. We use it for the intro. We do, yeah, yeah. We see you, and that's like that's what we, you know, that's what we feel like. Sometimes you just gotta let let those feelings go, and you know, just yeah. we gotta be here and enjoy the little moments, you know, the mm-hmm. smallest things. Because some people, I just feel like forget about that. The smallest things, you know, waking up, being able to easily walk in the kitchen and make yourself a cup of coffee you know Mm -hmm. um so it's we got to realize we got to appreciate those little small moments um Mm -hmm. but yeah and i feel like that that's why i like to 
mm. you know, like record certain stuff, like and vlog because, like, gr- growing up, I lost quite a few family members, and like just like looking back on it, you know, like like you wish that you would have saved, you know, some voicemails or like you wish you would have mm-hmm. had like pictures and stuff like that. See, see, like you you never really lost anybody, so it's hard to kind of is like. It's hard to have those feelings if you never, if yeah. you never really lost anybody. So yeah. like, so like, it makes me want to record. So one day, if something does happen, you know, you, have that. you got these memories there, and mm-hmm. like, you don't really like. I know sometimes you be like, well, like I don't want to record, but like in reality, like you gonna look back on it like twenty years from now and be mm-hmm. like, man, I'm just I'm so glad that you know I recorded that or I took a picture of that or mm-hmm. I did that. And I feel like that one of the things that I feel like I want to do more mm-hmm. and I need to do more, but. I feel like, in a way, like, uh, like, I guess it's just like a little insecurity. Still, it's just I wish I could. I wish I took more pictures. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I do a lot of videos, but I wish I just took more pictures too at the same time. I think me too. I don't know why. You, t- you take a lot of pictures. <laughs> I, I take a lot of videos too, but I'm like, hold on, I didn't take a picture, but I yeah. took a video. Like, yeah, you're yeah, right. And then I, I feel, need to take more pictures. And then I feel like I feel like like. I feel like, because I know me and you both deal with this. Yeah. It is just like, you know, but I feel like everybody kind of deals with this now because everybody wants the perfect picture and it doesn't always happen like that. You know, you might take a hundred photos and only like three look good, you know, yeah. when when in reality, like, you know, they all look good. Yeah. You know? So We're all in the picture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know. Yeah. So, that's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, what, so I would say... So kind of like, I guess now, I guess, cause you've been in your, I mean, you've been in your accident for like almost eight years. Yeah. Um, eight years, yeah, eight years. So, uh, what's one thing that you would advise, like recommend to anybody out there, like throughout these years, like what's something that you know will get better over time? Cause I know some people kind of, it does take them a while to kind yeah. of just get over the realization that they're not going to be able to walk again. Mm-hmm. Um, like what's one thing that you, maybe you could tell somebody or, you know, just give them any kind of advice of like to keep moving forward in life, you know? Um, I would say to um, take advantage of being disabled. <laughs> yes. of all the like benefits out there. Like, I mean, disabled already. So, I mean, if you are trying to go back to school, I don't know how it is in California, but I feel like every state has their benefits here in Texas. We do have Texas work course. So, if you're disabled, take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. Go to school, go to college for free. They'll pay for it. That's, mm. I don't have student debt. Thanks oh, to wow. that. Yeah. So, it's like, like you can still be successful so um i know relying on ssbi like it's not that i'm being ungrateful but it's Mm. just not enough right um so uh, yeah you can still go to school go to school if you start going to school you can get um like modifications so if you do need extra time to take your test take advantage of that of the disability um program they have in your school that way if you have to go to the restroom you can stop go to the restroom come back because that's what i did Mm -hmm. not because i needed like um, help typing but you know they do offer that too so it's like take advantage of that and then i don't think this workforce does pay for your adaptation Uh, if you are trying to get back to um driving not your vehicle but they'll pay for that yeah and i mean um just as as many just take advantage of that you know Mm -hmm. of all the opportunities Mm -hmm. there are with being disabled, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I would also say to stay busy mm-hmm. because at the, end, at the end of the day, whether you are able-bodied or disabled, if you're not doing anything, you're going to be thinking about stupid shit and it's like, do something. Go out there, meet people, you know? Um, yeah. Go to the gym. Like, just, I would say just stay busy because that's the main thing that has helped me now with um, being disabled and, like, grieving. Mm-hmm. Your mind is a powerful thing, so it's like if you're not doing yep. anything and you're being negative, mm-hmm. it's, it's gonna destroy you, right? So yeah. um, definitely stay just to stay busy and um, <laughs> find new hobbies. Yeah. If you don't like it, find new one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and third would be to make um, friends that have a disability, right? Because it's like yep. you. It's a form of therapy if you don't mm-hmm. feel like therapy works or if you don't have the funds to go to therapy, I would say um, that's a form of, you know, therapy. You know, you're talking to somebody else that's going through the same thing that you are and then you feel more included and then they might know somebody that has resources 
and they might know how to do it because they've been disabled for a long period. So I think that would be my top three things to yeah. recommend to somebody that is newly injured. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, now I know you said take advantage of the benefits. Are there any benefits that you know of that you would say like the average disabled person don't know of? Um, what other ones? Because like you said, um, you gotta make like you said, you gotta make friends and you know like network with other people that are in mm -hmm. your similar situation. And I feel like like that was one of the like like best Basic things that one? you yeah no no that that was one of the most best things that you could have said because I feel like a lot of us don't want to make friends with people that are in wheelchairs because yeah. it makes yeah. it makes you. It, it just brings it into reality into reality that you're in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that that just being able to have that and network is so important because like you said, they might have resources that you might not know of. You know, so that's why I said that. But Oh, okay. <clears throat> do you know of any benefits that, you know, maybe I might not know of that, you know, you know, maybe I could take it. Like, well, you, I know you said something of? with the school. So that's like I guess it is it like a grant or something? Oh, for a Texas workforce, yeah. um, I I don't know if it's considered. I guess yeah, it's considered a grant. Mm -hmm. But um, I just went through them to through Texas workforce, and they got they paid everything. So I I don't know how that kind yeah. of works. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just need that to pay for my school, my books, and my parking. So. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, they'll definitely help you with that, and then find a job. Yeah, um, okay. I know That's that there's cool. programs. Yeah, when you're buying houses, or even like whenever you are paying for a bill. Oh, okay. um, you don't even have to own the house, but you can sell. You can call like your um, water bill or like mm -hmm. I, I know for sure it's internet. Mm -hmm. Um, you can like you're disabled, you're re receiving some type of benefit, and then they'll lower that amount. Oh wow! Um, so there's stuff like that yeah, or even when you're buying a house, you know the, the mm -hmm. that that as well. Um, and this is house you're house. in Houston, or you're in Texas, Houston, yeah. Texas. Oh, okay. Texas, yeah. Um, or even like my friend got me into doing, um, what was it? Um, water skiing. Ooh. So I had no idea they had adaptive water skiing and it wasn't because of my friend. Mm -hmm. He did it. He said, hey, you should come out. And he also, he also does adaptive fishing. So I didn't even know. And mm. it was all thanks to him. And then he did like skiing and, um, like real skiing with the snow. Yeah. And they paid for his flight, for his like, um, housing at the time. Yeah. And. It was with this um, organization as well. Mm -hmm. That's so, awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah that's and they have like cool. so many stuff like that. Yeah, they that do. People would pay for you just to go. Yeah, they yeah. do. And I feel like I don't. I feel, mm -hmm. again, I I do still feel like it's kind of like an insecurity of like being around like a lot of people that are in wheelchairs because I feel like yeah. I feel mm -hmm. like I don't take advantage of the resources that I have available mm -hmm. enough because, <clears throat> but then at the same time. A lot of the things that I do get invited to are like three hours away, and it'd be at like nine o'clock in the morning. So it's hard for mm -hmm. it's hard for us to kind of get there at nine o'clock in the morning. But I mean, I, but I mean, there are certain things that I feel like that I can. It's like free resources, but yeah. sometimes you're you're not really <clears throat> within the area kind of thing. But yeah, yeah. But sometimes I feel like I that I don't make time for it. Yeah. When, when I'm pretty sure if I was going to a Drake concert at nine o'clock in the morning, yeah. I, I, could make, I could make time for it, but yeah. I'm not making time for it. That's for sure. You know, for this, you know, ad adaptive skiing or adaptive fishing. That's true. Or, you know, because they do offer that, you know, like we get free tickets to Dodger games. It's also a scary thing, it. I guess. Is it, is it, yeah, do it you is. feel scared? Like if you were going to be invited to go it, skiing? It is. It, it, it is scary. It, it like, it, it is scary. scary. Yeah, because it just it really just puts it into reality that you are in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So it is. And it it's, is it's a, a scary it's a insecurity. thing. Well, I'm gonna be honest, and I get scared too because I'm like, oh my gosh, what if he falls, breaks his breaks his knee, and I'm like, oh my mm -hmm. god, now we have to deal with you know a broken something. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it is. It is scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is scary getting hurt after being disabled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You feel yeah because mm -hmm. uh, 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 just like you i had a fall too but it was in vegas oh, but it yeah. was because uh, alcohol was involved <laughs> but, I, but i don't really drink like that but it was, it was like some juice yeah it was some juice <laughs> and i fell out of my wood being my i don't even know what happened it was like my, my friend was pushing me and i fell out of my wheelchair and he pretty like i don't even remember falling i just remember him picking me up yeah. and putting me in a wheelchair and just we kept going well, and then a yeah. week later my femur's fractured yeah well no i think you guys were out drinking 
mean, we, we, we were. Yeah, and then, no, but I think <clears throat> your friend had said, like, oh, that you were saying, like, oh, no, I can get up and walk. I can get up and walk. And I think, I and I think you, he's like, he said that you were trying to get up out your wheelchair. No, walk, no, 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 then, no, that's not the and case. Then, and, no. Then you <laughs> fell, and then you fell. I probably was trying to yeah, get up. I could get yeah. up. No, like, yeah, yeah, it was there, something there, like that. It was something like that where you did fall over and then you broke, yeah. you had a fracture in your femur. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was something like that because we had drank a lot of alcohol in a short period of time. And then um, I, bad but, idea. Yeah, but then you yeah. she stayed in the room because I think you said like you wasn't feeling good. That's I how said, much we drank. I said, "Oh, I gotta go to the room and charge my phone." I never. No, came you in. stayed in the room. Yeah, I know. She, I okay. never came back out. Yeah, she I stayed. Yeah, she stayed in the room, and we went downstairs, and I won a whole bunch of money, <laughs> like in like literally like five minutes. I won like a whole bunch of money, and I said, "Look, I gotta leave." Because I'm gonna lose all this money back, so I made it was like a couple thousand dollars that I won like like in like five minutes, and I was like, no, like we gotta leave. And then from there, I blacked out. We were in Vegas, so it's a it was a Vegas trip. Have you ever it, been it to was Vegas? Behavior. Yeah. That was horrible behavior. No, <laughs> <laughs> no judging. Look, I don't drink like that. I really don't drink like that. But that was just it was just we was down there for like that weekend, and and they flew in from uh. Your they friends, flew, yeah, yeah, like they flew in from Georgia, and then we drove from California, and we all met in Vegas, and no. yeah, like, like, yeah. You, Have you ever you been to Vegas? Is. Yeah, I went one time. I did a vlog about it. So you yeah. guys want to check it out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, cool. cool it was cool. cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I liked it. My yeah. smart drive definitely helped. No, I'm not sponsored, <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, rolling through the carpet that's hard. Mm. So I was gonna say there's helped. some hotels that we would not recommend because we've stayed at different hotels mm -hmm. and some hotels they will say, "Oh, it's accessible," but then the ramp is going like this, and yes. I'm just like, mm -hmm. "What in the heck?" Yes. And then parking's all this way, then all the way down that way. I'm just like, "Oh no." Mm -hmm. and yeah, we've, yeah, we've stayed at almost every hotel on the strip, so. We kind of, like, no. So, like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all about finding the best one, though. Yeah. You know, like, I like to find, like, the stuff that's, you know, I would say, like, the most, uh, like, the best for somebody, you know, which, yeah. like you said, like, that carpet does, like, and they have it carpet. stretches out. Yeah, and they have yeah, carpet in every hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't want you to fall, you know, you gambling, you, know, you jump up, you want a big hand, you fall. Slip and fall. Yeah. yeah. And then they suing. <laughs> stuff like that. And uh, we ain't going to keep you too much longer, but I, I do want to ask you that because I feel like that. That this is a question that a lot of people ask, and then a lot of uh, people you, wonder too. Yeah, a lot of people wonder. And you did say that you work. How, like, how is it, like, mentally knowing knowing that you have this disability, and then now you know you want to work, but you're kind of unsure if you're going to be able to make enough money to support yourself in the long run. You know, say you want to move out, you want to get your own house. Like, how is that mentally for you? Um, It's definitely scary, right? Yeah. Like, with that, it comes, like, grocery shopping. Like, how am I supposed to get everything in, mm -hmm. you know, grocery shopping? So it's, it's like, a, um, even now, like, I'm starting to kind of, like, fill it, and I've only been working for two months. Yeah. Where like um I'm not going to the gym as often because I'm tired from work, but mm -hmm. like I still have to take care of my body. But like I'm trying to give money because I'm not getting social security anymore, right? Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So it's it's definitely scary. So I'm just taking it day by day. Yeah. You know, um, it's like okay, I'll worry about it once I'm there. Let me just get this day over, yeah. do the best I can at my job. Yeah. And, you know, maybe when I'm at home, instead of, like, being on TikTok, mm -hmm. you know, stand for, like, 10 minutes, you know? Yeah. Um, or, you know, go to sleep a little earlier so you have the energy to go to work and then maybe go to the gym for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so. Do you feel like. I, I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> do you feel like. Sorry about that, but do you feel like that that if you was to live independently by yourself, do you feel like that you could make enough money to support yourself? Um. Yeah, renting. Yeah, like you know, I'm going to like uh, an apartment. Yeah, I I think so, but um, I definitely don't want to move out yet. Mm. My dad built me a room in the back, and I love it. So <laughs> I definitely want to um use this. Uh, we still have yeah. something to build here. It's fairly new. It's like a, a maybe mm. like two months. So yeah. we. 
we have a two story house, right? And I was using a stair lift, but mm-hmm. the roof, the restroom wasn't accessible. So it was like a lot of struggling. And my dad okay. was like, you know what? Meanwhile, you're here. Let's just make your life easier. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So that's always been my goal. Like, even like for um, certain doors, like we just made a lot of things just to make my life easier here. So here I have my room, I mean, my bed, and then my shower, which is right here. And then a rolling um, sink. So mm-hmm. everything is just, it. I get home and then I just come to my room and yeah. I can just lay yeah. down. Instead yeah. of like going up and then trying to like get into the um, restroom that's mm-hmm. not yeah. accessible. Oh. Mm-hmm. So for now, I think I'm just going to um, stay here and yeah. stay with somebody and buy mm-hmm. a house and make it accessible. Yeah. My dad doesn't want me to move out. He's like, no, you know, you're going to come over here and bring your husband. We're all going to yeah. live together. I'm like, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm like I'm just you don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, nah, trust me, it's it's definitely understandable, but it's just I ask that question because I I hear I hear a lot and I see a lot of people that are afraid to kind of get off of social security because they don't know if they're gonna be able to make enough money to support themselves. So that's why I kind of ask that question because I don't want to say the the uh, the person's name, but she's on Instagram, but she she fights like, with uh, depression a lot. And she said that that was one of like the main causes was you know like just the stress of her knowing that if she goes back to work that that she has to stop the, uh, her uh, social security yeah. and that uh, like just the fear of getting off of it was just mentally draining for her and it caused her like a lot of anxiety and stuff like that. So that's why I kind of brought that up because I just wanted to kind of oh. ask because I do hear about that a lot and you know. It's this, not easy. Yeah, it's not easy, you know, not. being in a wheelchair mm-hmm. and kind of living Working. on your own too, you know, yeah. because yeah, you do as a someone in a wheelchair, you're going to need extra just extra Something. time, extra yeah, everything, you know? Yeah. So it, it's hard. It gets costly. Yeah. It, that's the whole being thing. Is expensive. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> It is pricey. And then just imagine for the people who come on here, because it sounds like that, you know, like you have like some type of health insurance or insurance that covers some things. But there are people that we talk to that don't have, have any health insurance yeah. at all. And it's scary because I would I, I couldn't even imagine, mm-hmm. you know, them needing stuff and then really not being able to get it. Because, you know, for guys, we have to cath every four to five hours. And, you know, a box yeah. of catheters are like, you know, like they're almost not, 100 bucks sometimes. Yeah, they're not. They're yeah. Not and yeah, so it's it's it, it gets costly. Like you said, being disabled is very expensive. It, mm-hmm. it, like that's something I want to put on a shirt or something. Yeah. Like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know. But but then at the same time, you know, speaking of that, I went on your Instagram and I seen that you're the founder of Willie Cool Things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, tell yeah. us about tell us about that. How'd you okay, come so with I'm, it? Yes. Yeah. I'm actually wearing one right now. Ooh. So the front the front says, um, I am more than walking and the back says um, disabled is in a bad work. So wow. I do have short sleeve and long sleeve. This is mm-hmm. for the winter. Okay. Cozy. Uh-huh. So I have this one, have it in blue and gray. So I actually have my boxes right here and then they're uh-huh. like right there. Yeah. Um, so I just came out with these long sleeve shirts. Um, this is the blue one. Ooh. I like this like, I like them. Yeah. And okay. they are comfort colors. So they're like a little oversized and uh-huh. um, they, um, I, I really like that. Okay. Okay, what um, sizes so do you got? I have um, in short sleeve. I have the color black and yellow Ooh. and blue. Okay. Um, I have small, medium, large, and then extra love, and then extra extra love. Oh, okay. That's how I have it in my website. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm I definitely need, gonna yeah. need I'm, one. Yeah. I'm gonna need. All right. All right. All right. But what size do you need? I think I might go with either I don't know a small. I really I I'm a small, but sometimes I like like a sh, you know if a long sleeve maybe like a medium you know just to okay. feel a little extra yeah loose okay. you know for the yeah okay and what colors would you recommend for us to get because I because I, I feel like I want to give me a little long sleeve because you know it's, are you it's, wearing it's, a small it's, it's or a medium. I'm wearing a medium. Okay, see, I think yeah, I have to go a with a medium. Yeah, I'm gonna need an extra love. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. So I definitely put it in order with you as soon as we got the phone. Um, yes. We, thank we you, would thank love. You. We would love to support. Um, and like I said, I need me a long sleeve. It's about to get cold out here. I know um, it's yes. cold. Yes, it's getting cold. So yeah. Okay. So, so um, how did you come up with the um your clothing line? 
So I came up with it. Um, so I was working at a call center, right? Mm-hmm. And this was maybe like in 2020. And when I was trying to like tell my manager my accommodations, because, uh, you know, the call center, they're very like strict about restroom breaks. And I'm like, like, I just want you to know that I need extra time in the restroom. And sometimes in the facility, people use the accessible stall, right? Yes. Um, and <laughs> you're like, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so that that's like another issue that maybe we should talk about another yeah. day or today. I don't know. Yeah. So um, if you know, you know. But um, I told her like, hey, like, I may need extra time. Mm-hmm. So um, we talked about it and whatever. And she made him very awkward. She's like, okay, well, you know, with whatever you have going on. But she couldn't say the word disabled. Like she made it very, very awkward. Mm-hmm. And um, that's when it kind of clicked. Like, and that's when I started to realize that people were just, so like typically around that topic in yeah. the corporate world mm-hmm. there's so like and, like accommodations like you know yeah or just in general like people are like oh no you shouldn't say you're disabled and i'm like brother i'm disabled <laughs> you know yeah. so um that's kind of how i felt and that's why i decided to put it in the back like disabled isn't a bad word and then like throughout my injury there's a lot of time that i question my existence like oh why well, can't walk like i can't like I can walk, you know, mm-hmm. and I felt very fair for a very long time, and that's why I decided to like put it in the front, like, hey, like I'm more than walking, you know, mm-hmm. I'm more than my disability, like I'm yeah. doing things that people that are able body, that are able body are doing, right? Mm-hmm. So um, that's just kind of like how I felt and how I feel about other people. That I'm like, look, like they have all the odds, like against them, and look what they're doing. Like, why yeah. are they doing this? Why aren't you doing it? And taking mm-hmm. back the of life and world so that's why i decided to do it and i really really stand for it that's why i was like you know i'm just gonna like yeah pass my debit card and and i know they're gonna sell because i would buy it yeah mm-hmm. so that, that's how i came up with really cool things yeah that's i dope. like the yeah. name too that's really dope. Cool yeah, I, know, I know i know i know i know i've seen that i've seen that that's dope that's dope but um is there anything that you know looking back on it you know for the past eight years is there anything that you would uh, I would say like to share for anybody who has a new injury. Is there any advice that you would like to give them, or or you know, just give anybody that's that's going through that tough period of you know, like the first year, maybe first two years of you know them having a spinal cord injury. Is there any advice that you would like to give? Um, I would say um to take videos and pictures because on the day that you're not being kind to yourself or you're very hard on yourself, you're like hey, like, this was me one time, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. not at the hospital, like, or, like, um, I'm I'm a little stronger then. Or, like, when I was in that time, like, I didn't know how to wipe my butt. Now yeah. I wipe my butt, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and just stuff like that, like, I, I think it's a friendly reminder that, you know, like, you are getting better. Like, that life does get better because yeah. you learn certain different techniques or just, I don't know if it's the injury or just, the, like, maturing, but it's like you mm-hmm. look at, the world a little different and you like get a taste of it a little different mm-hmm. than if you didn't and it's also cliche it's all blah blah but yeah. you get to that point that you're like man like it's it's, it's not that bad or it's just like you just mm-hmm. everything just makes more sense yeah um i feel like i'm in that point in my life where i'm i'm very comfortable like who i am and like mm-hmm. like who i am with my wheelchair i walk in on that walk i roll into like a place that I don't feel insecure. Like I'll go up to somebody and look at them in the eye and like, "Hey, how's it going?" Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I, I'm glad I'm like at that point in my life where yes. I'm, I'm not embarrassed of who I am. Like this mm-hmm. is yeah. why I'm this, you know? Yes. Yeah. Trust and I feel like mm-hmm. if I'm there, like you'll get there. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I tell people that all the time, but you know, I feel like a lot of people, you know, a lot of women and a lot of men, you know. Like, they might look at you or they might look at me and they feel like that, you know, man, I wish I was you. And they feel like that it happens overnight. And I try to tell them that it doesn't. It's a process. It's a, it's a lot of ups and downs. Look, trust me. Yeah. I try, I try to let everybody know I was in the same situation that they're probably going through right now. You know, feeling depressed, feeling, you know, suicidal, feel, just all that all that, like, I, like I've been there. Like, so I understand. But just know that this is a process and it doesn't happen overnight you gotta put in a lot of work yeah. you gotta go to therapy you know it, it like you gotta learn what they teach you in those courses and classes because that's what's gonna help you be able to live a comfortable life moving forward and you know 
you know, learning how to transfer. I, I, like, to me, the transfer was the most important part because you use it every single day, multiple times a day. Mm-hmm. So it's just put in the work. And, and it takes you practice, you yeah. know. Practice, yeah. practice. practice. Yes. It's a, it's a long yeah. in, um, journey for sure, full yeah. of um, ups and downs and accidents. <laughs> exactly exactly and we all we all go through it we all go through accidents we all go trust me me too i have them all the time you know it it, 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 it happens here it's, and there it, yeah well yeah no, it doesn't happen all the time but i'm saying it it does happen so yeah. just yeah look all you gotta do is just prepare for it you know yeah. may, maybe just you know carry an extra bag maybe carry some extra clothes or something like that so yeah that's it but um, yeah. I was just going to say, okay, next question. So we have some questions from the followers. Mm-hmm. So, oh, um, you yeah, Yes, yeah. from, you know, followers. Uh, okay, so Wheelchair Chino, he asked, what is the most difficult part about being a quadriplegic? Um, for me, is doing a tongo. Uh, uh, how do you say tongo in English? Oh, uh, like a bun? Oh, a ponytail. Right? A ponytail, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, that's the hardest thing because sometimes when I'm hot, I be kind. Of, I get in the staff and I'm like, oh my god, I just pull my hair up, yeah. you know, like yeah. we're doing things, and I'm just like, and you know, my mom's busy, my sisters, you know, they have their own things going on sometimes. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I want, yeah. So my hair, the Your hardest hair. thing. Oh wow, because that's something I cannot like do. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then the next question is by simply Nikki Colette. Um, she said, what made you share your journey so openly and be so vulnerable? Love you. Oh, <laughs> love you back. And <laughs> it just started as a, um, a lot of people went to the hospital to see me, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, my parents didn't work at, at the time. So it just felt like replying back to everyone was like a lot of work. My mm-hmm. parents didn't I had anything. So it was just very hard, right, to hold a phone. So yeah. it just made sense to just make one video that way everybody can know <laughs> or like mm-hmm. one post that way everybody can know and it just kind of became like that and people started to reach out mm-hmm. i became friends with like a lot of wheelchair users yeah and That's awesome. vulnerable like i just the way i see it is like um what i post is what you get in real life mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so i try to be like real honest just be yeah. real real like um that way if you guys meet me in life you're like oh she was the same thing like she wasn't like all like hyper and like yeah. Being very positive, like this is who I am, you know. Like yeah. I'm not always happy, I'm not always sad. Like yeah, yeah. I won't cry if you say this, if you say this topic, and yeah, I'm very anal about people using the physical saw if they're not disabled and don't yeah. use like really device, yeah. you know. So it's, it's what you get, what you yeah. Get in real life. Yeah. Okay. He- and I would love for you to come back on a podcast and like us do like little videos because we do other videos other than just like little podcast interviews. We do videos where we do discuss topics and that would be a topic that I would love to discuss because people try to take advantage of the disabled benefits and they don't be disabled, you know, and it, it it's frustrating and it pisses me off because, you know, we might need that. Or like somebody, they just want to use the handicap accessible stall in the bathroom because it's bigger when they're just using it because, and I, and I feel like I was guilty of it before I was in a wheelchair. I feel like everybody who walks into the restroom and has to, mm-hmm. I would say do number two. Cause I never really mm-hmm. ever did number two outside my house. But if I did, <laughs> I, I feel like everybody goes for the disabled stall yeah. and you don't really realize that that's there for a reason. That's there for yeah. somebody to be able to use it. Cause I can't fit in a regular stall in my wheelchair mm-hmm. in a bathroom. Mm-hmm. So that's it's it. So, small. yeah. So I would definitely love to have you come back on here and yeah. us do like, you know, like some topic videos. Little discussion and, yeah, videos. Yeah, ex- exactly. Because there's a lot of things to be discussed, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. In. Yeah. Okay. okay Another so. question is from Chula G19 on Instagram. She asks, how has dating been for you? It, it's been a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I had my boyfriend, right? The one that caused the accident. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And um ever ever since him I did have another boyfriend. Um he was actually the guy that took my homework at the hospital. Oh, so really? at the time, yeah, at at the time I didn't really think much of it, you know, uh-huh. like, I had just started my birthday in October. So mm-hmm. I had just known him for two months. Mm-hmm. And like oh. he never hit on me or anything. Um, you know, I told him I had a boyfriend. Yeah. Um he was cute, but I, he never like flirted with me or anything. So yeah. I just like thought he was cute. I was like, oh well, maybe he doesn't like. He maybe he doesn't 
like me like that or maybe he's not into gals and that, that's right. okay right yeah and he never asked for my number and i was like um i didn't really think much of it but after that day he kept on going to the hospital and he would always come with something either it was candy or flowers Aww. and at the time i was kind of like maybe he's so sorry for me you know yeah maybe, whatever maybe he thinks i need a friend uh-huh so that friend became my boyfriend Aww. and we dated for like a year or so and he was very sweet. He made me feel very beautiful at Aww. my lowest. Aww. Not that you're not cute when you have a collar, but I just, right. yeah, I wore a diaper and like, you know, I was sitting in bed. So it was very, yeah. you know, at, at my lowest, I would say yeah, uh, for me. And um, we just, he ended up breaking up with me. <laughs> and, and I, and I respect him to this day because he was just very straightforward. Like, hey, you know, I just, don't think it's going to work out. And he just broke up with me. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought that that was very mature of him, just letting me know, like, hey, you know, I'm not putting you. Because that's what I always told him. Like, if you ever don't feel like, you know, it's working, just just let me know, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, but he helped me a lot through my um, injury. I did gain a lot of weight, and he helped me to, like, lose it. Wow. And he would always be just very sweet. Um, and that's what I needed at the time. So mm-hmm. then that happened. After that, I started dating. And nothing really serious came up. I did get into like Tinder and like apps like that. Mm-hmm. And they were very like, what happened to you? Or very like, oh. Yeah. Uh, it just very uh, comments like that that would make me feel like mean. And then it, it got to the point that in the beginning, I didn't know if to put like, should I put like a uh, profile pic only? Should I put my mm. wheelchair? So at the beginning, I yeah. only put like a profile pic. So yeah. I was like, no, that's kind of catfishing, right? But then yeah. I was kind of like, oh, well, I don't want them. I don't want to meet them. And then be like, oh, so you're in a butcher. Yeah. So that's kind of like lying. It's like, hey, this is who you are. You should post mm-hmm. like all kinds of pictures. So then I got to the point that I felt confident enough to put like a butcher picture for the first one. And then the rest, it was just selfie. Right. And then that's when I started to feel more confident. And then, yeah, I would see comments like that. But it didn't really matter because I knew like. Mm-hmm. my worth I guess or I, mm-hmm. it, I didn't let it bother me at that point yeah. um, and then I started to date this one guy so I dated him for like two years mm-hmm. and he was like a piece of shit he pretended to be somebody he wasn't what? he was very very nice in the beginning yeah he was very nice and everything I would say or would want to do he would like agree to it mm-hmm. um, and so I honestly thought like that he was the one I thought we were going to get married we would talk about that oh my gosh and, and there was a point that I, I've never felt insecure over a girl that was able-bodied um, when I, since I got injured. Like, mm-hmm. it was never, oh, like, she can walk or, you know, she has a big butt. I don't have a big butt, you know? Yeah. So it wasn't until I started to date him that I was like, is he looking at her? Like, yeah. I it just felt weird, you know? And yeah. I had never been in that position. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was, like, a little um, part where I felt a little insecure like that. But it went away. And then after that, we just had, like, issues. Um, it, he was like physically, not uh, mentally abusive, mm-hmm. and I feel like the reason why I stayed for so long is because he would do like, uh, um, like I was telling Kev yesterday, had an accident, like like a shitty accident, like you yeah. know, like it was pretty bad for Ross, yeah. and it was just so bad that like it was just like I had to be like cute, like. See am I, but it was yeah. just like everywhere, right? Yeah. So I, I, the more I cleaned myself, like it was just more mess and more mess. Oh my so gosh. I was like, look, sisters, mm-hmm. in like an hour. He's outside. He can buy me some clothes and help me clean myself. Mm-hmm. And um, he handled it so well. He was like, oh no, like don't worry about it. He helped me clean up. I had to clean the floor with Lysol and everything. And it was just pretty bad. So he had to like go under the saw and then like come. And it was just a very vulnerable moment yeah. for me to yeah. be the guy that I was dating and help me clean up because yeah. we you know just mm-hmm. um I was just weird so like because he would do things like that I would allow him to disrespect me that way so if anyone's watching this and if you are in the top of the relationship don't say because oh it's because he did this or you know he um put air in my tire or, like mm-hmm. you know he like helped me shower yeah um you know I, I know that like it gets to a point where like sometimes like your boyfriend can be it gets to the point that they become kind of like your caregiver yeah and i, I don't i wouldn't know because i mean i'm not married i'm you know i never yeah. lived with mm-hmm. guy but i feel like you have to put that line to like be like yeah you are helping me but like you can't disrespect me like that you know mm-hmm. so exactly. um, i i didn't know how to kind of like balance that out so i 
a lot, a lot of disrespect mm-hmm. with that. And he ended up cheating on me, <laughs> and he broke up with me the day my sister's viewing. He just shit, huh? Yeah, oh he's now God. dating. Yeah, he's not dating the girl he cheated on me with. So it was very weird. It was a very weird moment at the time. Cause, like, um, I mean, the pain of my sister just doesn't compare to him, right? But it was just, like, a lot of weird feelings. And yeah. at the time, I kinda, yeah. I'm kind of grateful that it happened that way because mm-hmm. um, it, it distracted me from my sister's pain. So, you know, like, I think it, it, it helped me to not go insane with them losing my sister because she, she was just, she's like, she was just everything to me, like my mentor and like everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was more than a big sister to me. So mm-hmm. um, that's how I look at it now. Like it helped me distract myself from it. Doing mm-hmm. something crazy. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. So. Um, wow. That... Yeah, that, that, was, that was very toxic, honestly. A very, very um, yeah. weird yeah. time. Okay. Wow. Okay, then look, before we let you go, do you have any questions for us? Where did you guys meet? <laughs> We met, I was 15 when we met. We were in high school. Mm-hmm. So we met. No. Yeah, yeah. So we, I, we lived in Georgia. So my family, I'm originally from California. And then my family, my parents moved to Georgia. So we have family in Georgia too. So um, I was pretty much raised in Georgia. And after okay. high school, I, I moved to California. But um, yeah. Wait. Sorry. Oh, why did you- where do we go to school? Uh, we would. No, we- like- you keep oh, cutting out I, a little bit. I'm you keep sorry. cutting out a little bit. Sorry about that. Say it again. Okay. Oh, I meant to say, um, why did you move? Oh, um, I think my parents were missing like my other, my mom's side of the family because it was my dad's side of the family in Georgia. So we Mm -hmm. like we were like, oh, you know, like we wanted to move back to California, you know, my and kind of live near my mom's side of the family with my grandparents, my great grandparents, you know, like her sisters and stuff. So we I moved back. Um, But me and Kevin dated in high school, like since uh, our sophomore year. And I was so sad. Like I told like my parents knew Kevin too in high school. So like I was so sad. I was like, no, I don't want to move. Like I want to stay here in Georgia. My boyfriend lives here. Like, no, I'm not moving. And I was 17. So they were like, no, you're not you're not staying here. You know, you have no no, your parents are not going to be here. Like, who are you going to stay here with? And I was like, with my boyfriend, like, you know, so they were like, no, you're not staying. And so and then at the same time, it was like I'm graduating high school. So I'm like, you know what? I could go to California and go to school over there. You know, like it'll be so much fun, you know, something different. So I I did end up moving and, mm-hmm. you know, that's where me and Kevin kind of uh, we we just weren't together anymore for a while. So I went to school. I went to CSUB, California State University in Bakersfield. And um, Kevin went on to the military. Oh, what's that noise? Is that us? Is that us or is that? <laughs> My neighbors are be loud. Oh, oh, I was no, going to say, I was like, oh. <laughs> um, no, but uh, yeah, so... Kevin went into the military, and then we mm-hmm. we reconnected after his um, spinal cord injury, um, mm-hmm. and that's how yeah. we pretty much got back together. And I, yep, that's I was going to yeah. school, and I ended up switching my major because I was seeing everything. I couldn't handle a lot of things that I was seeing in the hospital. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't think I want to be a nurse anymore, just because mm-hmm. it was tough, like seeing you know other people in the same room as Kevin too. And like yeah. having to see what, you know, the nurses were, it was, it was a little traumatizing, honestly. Mm-hmm. So I just, um, but yeah, we reconnected and bam, now we're yeah. here in California. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, but we initially <laughs> kind of like, I, not really met, but she sent me a friend request on my space. On oh my yeah. Space. We, that was my space <laughs> days. Oh my, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So we graduated in, 2009 so yeah. you said you graduated in 2012 so we graduated three years before you so that's mm-hmm. when we graduated high school but yeah it was it was a long damn it was a long time ago now we're getting old yes we're we getting are old. we are so now yeah so now we live in we both live in california um after after my injury and everything um uh i didn't want to leave <laughs> let's talk about that i didn't want to leave georgia but after i came out here and experienced california yeah. I was like, yeah, I ain't, I I can't live anywhere else but out here. Yeah, we were we were back we were definitely back and forth. Like I like after his accident, like I moved to Georgia and lived with him. 
after his accident and in you know we're being real you were very like depressed i was, I was going through a lot i was i was going through too much yeah he was very depressed down you wouldn't do anything you would really be in your room all day yeah and honestly it was it was it came to a point where it was like draining me like i'm like oh my god what am i going to do like i can't sit here and be locked up in the room with you all day so mm-hmm. I like I honestly like I I came back to California and I was like you know what I'm gonna let him hand like he's gonna have to handle that you know like I can't I but can only it do was some a lot. It was yeah a lot. it was a lot and then yeah. and then like with like my ex and everything like there was like a lot of things like that I just kind of wanted answers to and yeah like it's just I really like like it, it it's really just sometimes you get to a point where. You know, you kind of remember everything, but it starts to be a blur. And it's just like you need answers to certain questions. And it's just like, you know, like like sometimes you just got to go on that path to go find them. And, you know, in order to, you know, try to get better and really in order to move forward sometimes. And then that's what I needed to do. And then I feel like that once I got most of them, it was just I was able to I was I, like start living my life. And then I was able to, you know, get better. And then she, she came back in my life, and she was just like, you know, like she made me do things. And then I like, made I, you yeah. come out here. I was like, no, nope, yeah. I'm not going back to Georgia. You need yeah. to come out here. Yeah, and- but but she made me get out the room. <laughs> she like like because like, like, like she said, I was really just going through it to the point where I didn't, I didn't leave the house. And yeah. she would always say, "Come on, like let's go here, let's go there." And but a. Uh, uh, one of the biggest reasons why I didn't want to leave, and this is one one thing that I really don't discuss like that, but it was because I didn't have my bowel program together. I didn't have my Catherine mm-hmm. program together, so I would have accidents. I was wearing a diaper, you know, and it's just like you know, like you would you would drive somewhere and you would get there, and then like like it's like I have an accident, and it's just like all you want to do is just go home from there, and it's just that part was just so draining and exhausting and it was just so frustrating you know because then at the same time you get upset you get mad and it kind of like ruins your whole day and i can only imagine how it feels for her because it's just like you know like it takes time for her to get ready you know she gets ready and then we get there and i'm like no like i want to go home and it's just like well you know like this person just had an accident it's gonna be hard to tell him like no like come on like let's go you know and i can only imagine how that feels to have to get ready go somewhere get there and then have to go back home so yeah, like I had to get, sure. I, look, I had to, I would just say it bluntly. I had to get my shit together. That was it. Mm. And then once I did, literally, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> had to get my shit together because I, I wasn't doing bow, I wasn't doing bow care. Like I was literally just like it would just, I would just wait till I use the bathroom on myself, and it just took that long. It took like a week sometimes, and then it was yeah. like you know, like that shit causes like health problems. Like you know, like it could really cause health problems. And it was just, I like, I had to get myself together. And then yeah. once I did, we just started doing stuff. And I started to live my life and have fun. We travel mm-hmm. now. We do everything. And it's just like, you know, okay, like, again, you have the occasional accident. But yeah. if you got your but stuff that's together. that's normal. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah. But if you got your stuff together, then, you know, you can live a comfortable life. You can travel. You can go things. You can get on airplanes. Mm-hmm. You know, you can do all that stuff. And that's what we do. But, again, I had to get, I really had to put in the work. I had to go to therapy. I had to do all that stuff in order to be where I'm at now. And, like I said, people see the people see the result right now. Like, yeah. this isn't the end result, but that's kind of what they see. Mm-hmm. And they feel like it happens right then and there. But it yeah. doesn't. It took time. It took years. It took me three yeah. years to get my shit together. Yeah. Three years. So. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. I just want to, like, kind of, like, put it out there. Um that it's not like bad to wear diapers. I know like there's a lot of people that do. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned it earlier, you know, but um, sometimes like wearing a diaper is a little easier to like clean up, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I just don't want people to be like, oh, you're bashing me because I'm wearing a diaper. Like, no, it's mm-hmm. not even like that, you know? And I know sometimes like wearing a diaper is a little easier to like clean up. Mm-hmm. But then I, yeah. I know what you're saying. So, you know, like, sometimes when you say stuff on the internet, then people will be like, wait, what do you mean? Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, so everything well, those well, comments. Well, well yeah. I depended on the diaper. So yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't just me wearing a diaper it was the fact that i depended on it you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it was just like i didn't have my stuff together so i knew that like if you kind of wear a diaper it kind of like conceals everything it like it like i don't it like really helps yeah like so it was just like it was the depends was more than it depends all right i was really dependent on it for (laughs) real so no it's there is nothing wrong with wearing them but when you relying on them i feel like that that's the problem but then at the same time 
sometimes it's really kind of hard, you know, and it's a process trying to, trying to learn your body. You know, like mm-hmm. you got to learn your body. You got to learn things. It's still things that I'm still technically, I'm trying to learn, you know, like I'm trying to learn when I got it. It's like, I feel like, like even year nine to 10, I, I feel like I'm just now learning of when I got to, you know, go calf, you know? So it's just, it, it's a process. It's, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a big process and it's a trial and error, you know? And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you kind of learn what you can and can't do um, mm-hmm. as far as like how you, you learn how to push it. Uh, you learn how to push the boundaries, like what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. And also, you know, like, like sometimes like, uh, like say we got to get up early somewhere. Like my bowel program is so on point that I could skip a day and then do bowel care the next day. Like, mm-hmm. like I have it on point to the, I wake up in the morning, I do my thing. I go to the gym. Um, and, I come home, I do bowel care in the morning, every morning, and that's how I handle it. I, I like, I have it on a set schedule. And that's what I try to tell people, too. You got to get on a schedule. You know, like, you got to, you know, make it repetitive. And I know, like, the, that whole process mentally is, is mentally draining. Yeah. Because I know by 12 o'clock, I'm going to have everything done. But I know that I have to do all these different steps by yeah. 12 o'clock. And that part right there is... It's mentally exhausting. It's mentally frustrating because it's it, like I don't. Not yeah. that it hurts. It's just it, it's just frustrating. That's it. It's mentally exhausting. Right? And yeah. That's it. You just gotta get. But I just. But me doing that allows my day to go by smooth. You know. So like I said, you put in the work and you will reap the benefits in the long run. So that's what I do. I put in the work in the morning. And then the afternoon, mm-hmm. we do whatever we yeah. want to do. So, yeah. yes. All right. Um, now, before we do end this uh, podcast, where can people follow you? Or if they have any questions, where can they reach out to you? Your Instagram or any mm-hmm. of your socials? Let us know. So, my you guys can follow me on Instagram. And it's M-M-M-I-L-Z-Z-Z. So, it's kind of like Mills. Okay. Mm-hmm. And- and on TikTok, it's males underscore 44. Okay. And on YouTube, if you just like type in males, M I L Z, you'll see my YouTube channel there. Mm-hmm. And I think, oh, Willy Cool Things is under Willy Cool Things okay. on Instagram. And then if you want to check out um, my shirts, my merch, okay. it would be at www.willycoolthings.com. Okay. Sounds good. And All we'll right also then. add it down in the description box below. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and then also for anybody out there, if you guys would like us to come up with some other videos, any discussion topics that you guys yes. would like us to talk about, any questions you guys have for Mills, like let us know down in the comment section below. And then, mm-hmm. you know, maybe we can plan something out, another video yes. uh, where we have a discussion maybe on dating relationship advice or um it could just be different topics so just yeah. let us know give yeah. us your ideas get and in the nitty gritty yeah because nit- yeah. I, I seen one that you did <laughs> where you was like would you rather have the feeling of yeah your but egg we could, plant your eggplant or the, the, the yeah uh, but we can say that for a na- another video gonna, but i'm not gonna answer it but, <laughs> okay. I, but, but i'm gonna put what what she okay. said look would you rather be able to feel your penis or Get the feeling in your legs back. That's a good that, that's one. A, uh, that was an amazing I, one. Good job on that one. Good I job would have on never that thought of that question, but that's a really good one. That's a good discussion. Yeah. We definitely yeah. got to do that one. Okay. Yeah, so. uh, well, thank you guys all for watching. I hope everybody has an amazing day. Got to let it go.